Welcome to New Beginnings United Methodist Church, a place of possibilities and transformation. Church. I'm the Reverend Dr. John Baldwin II, and I am here serving as a senior pastor along with Associate Minister Kiki Wood Terry. It's a blessing to have you tuning in with us today. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we, the people of God, are rejoicing and giving God praise in it. We have a few announcements that we want to lift in your hearing. We want to thank the mission team and all of our volunteers for an awesome experience on yesterday. We had a pop-up market where we were able to provide more than 200 units of quality food to our community. We want to thank our partners at GAS for helping us to achieve this great endeavor, and we want to encourage all of you to continue to partner with us and show up and serve in great ways that are making a difference. The media ministry is looking for persons to assist with managing the New Beginnings United Methodist Church social media. The opportunity comes with a small stipend, Please contact the church office if you are interested in finding out more information. Next Sunday will be the first Sunday of the month of May, and we are scheduled to have worship on the lawn. We will also offer the Sacrament of Holy Communion. If you are unable to attend the service in person and would like to take part in communion, you can stop by the church office Monday through Thursday between the hours of 11 a.m. and 2 p.m., to pick up your elements. You may also prepare elements at your home and tune in to the service virtually. Join us on Wednesdays at 7 p.m. for Bible study. We're currently exploring the series Untied and taking a critical look at the presence and impact of addiction on our families and community. In June, we will launch our Bible study series on the anatomy of peace. If you have not purchased your copy already, please contact the church office to make your purchase and be prepared to study with us as we get these powerful tools for mitigating conflicts in our lives. We want to take this moment to congratulate Dr. Terrico Amoson. We recently received news that Dr. Amoson has been promoted to Associate Professor of Psychology at Vanderbilt University's Medical Center where she serves as the clerkship director offering supervision to medical students. It is a wonderful thing to hear about you doing great things in the world and to know that you were a part of this church. Congratulations and we pray God continue to strengthen you and bless you as you move higher and go forward. Indeed, this resurrection season is one of elevation for the New Beginnings United Methodist Church. And we want to acknowledge all of our graduates so if you are graduating from high school or college this spring, please notify the church office by contacting our secretary, Ms. Regina Warren, at 205-328-3937. Again, that is 205-328-3937. Let us receive our call to worship. Give praise to the Lord. Proclaim his name. Make known among the nations what he has done. Sing to him. Sing praise to him. Tell all of his wonderful acts. Glory in his name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Let us pray. Holy and gracious God, we extol thee on this day. We declare that you are wonderful, good, and gracious towards each and every one of us. God, while we might not have everything that we want, we want to thank you, God, for having a reasonable portion of life, health, and strength. We know that you are the God who provides for each and every one of our needs, and for this, God, we give you thanks. Yes, Lord, before we ask you for anything, we want to praise you for everything because we realize that every good and perfect gift comes from you. Now, God, as we enter into this time of worship, we pray, oh God, that you will receive the singing of our, of our voices, God, and that you will receive the lifting of our hands, that you would even see our hearts and minds open, God, and receive them as an act of worship to your glory. 
God, use the words that we share to stir deep within each of us, God, a need and a, and, and, a, and a desire, God, to go forward and do great things in the earth. God, we pray this day that you will continue to provide wisdom to our leadership in the church. We pray, God, that you would provide strength, guidance, and comfort to our people. God, bless those who serve in elected positions and appointed positions throughout our nation and help them, O oh God, to do those things which will give great, the greatest honor and glory to you. God, we pray today that you will continue to work on the hearts of those who are fighting with malice, hatred, bitterness, and fear in our world. We know that it will only take a move of your Holy Spirit to convert and convict God those who need to change. We pray, God, that you would open our minds to what you are doing in this season and help us to have the boldness to partner with you and to do your work. God, this day we thank you for this great opportunity. And we ask, O oh God, that you would have your way among us. It's in the precious and holy name of your son, Jesus, that we pray and ask these blessings. Amen. Washington. 
There is no exercise better for the heart than reaching down and lifting people up. John Holmes. I am only one, but I am one. I cannot do everything, but I can do something. And I will not let what I cannot do interfere with what I can do. Edward Everett Hale. No work is insignificant. All labor that uplifts humanity has dignity and importance and should be undertaken with painstaking excellence. Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. Many of the world's most influential leaders talked about the importance of choosing a life that helps others. Perhaps they did so because this is the path that each of them had chosen. Perhaps they did so because these visionary leaders understood the massive challenges associated with transforming the world. Perhaps it is because in helping others there is this precious gift that we receive. It is the gift of importance that is thwarted towards us when we realize that our lives and efforts are intricately connected to the greater world around us. Whatever their motivation, the majority of the world's most influential leaders go on record teaching and encouraging all who will lead, heed their words to choose a life that helps others. In the third chapter of 1 John, the apostle contrasts love and giving up one's life with hatred and taking life. These two diametrically opposed practices sit as great chasms that divide good and evil, hope and dismay, justice and injustice in our world. John, throughout his letter, repeatedly insists that one cannot truly believe in Jesus without truly and selflessly loving other believers. I did not say here that John repeatedly insisted that one could not truly believe in Jesus Christ without reminding other people of their sins. I did not say that John repeatedly insisted that one can truly, cannot truly believe in Jesus without telling people that their sexual orientation needs to be something different. I did not say that John repeatedly insisted that one cannot truly believe in Jesus Christ without instituting policies that protect their own interests. I did not say that John repeatedly insisted that only really real believers in Jesus Christ fight to keep things the way that they are. I said that John repeatedly insists that one cannot truly believe in Jesus Christ without truly and selflessly loving other believers. Believing in Jesus is evidenced by a commitment to selflessly love and care for others. This is a choice. We have all seen instances where fear and hatred have motivated persons to take the lives of others, and the aftermath of such choices have bred horrific and terrifying experiences for the families of the victims and the compassionate around the world. You see, Loving others and caring for others places us in a position of humility. It causes us to consider what it may be like to live in the other person's shoes or to even consider the things that we have done in our own lives that have caused us to need compassion. It's hard to help a person whom you are constantly judging. That is because in the moments when you judge others, you are focused on their failings. You are focused on their differences, but in the moments when you seek to love others, you focus on their similarities, the things that you share with them. And you say things like, I know that she has a habit, but what are the habits in my life which I need to be forgiven of? I know that he is at fault, but what are the potential promises for his future so that I can help him achieve his greatest potential? In the moments when you judge others, you are focused on their failings, not the promises of their futures. You have determined their holistic worth 
based on a snapshot of your experience of them. You have not considered all the things that have led them to this point or the great plan that God has for their lives. The beautiful thing about God is that God truly sees our potential and offers as a help gifts to assist us with being more like him daily. Gifts of grace, gifts of mercy, the precious gift of the Holy Spirit. The beautiful thing about believing in Jesus is that it gives each of us purpose and calls us to be a part of God's divine work. You see, you can't believe that Jesus died on the cross so that we could be forgiven of our sins and not love God for it. And Jesus tells his disciples, if you love me, keep my commandments. Or in other words, if you love me, promote the work and kingdom that I promoted in the earth. Some take this to mean that we should be the ultimate defenders fighting for historic church practices. But I still hear the words from last week's message found in John chapter 21, where Jesus says to Peter, do you love me? Feed my sheep. Do you love me? Choose to serve those in need. On yesterday, we were able to do great ministry in Jesus' name. Our church partnered with the Greater Birmingham Alliance to stop pollution to offer fresh produce and groceries to members of our community. Literal food is only one way we can feed Jesus' sheep. But there are many ways known to humanity, and I dare to say that there are even more ways of feeding and serving others that are yet to be discovered. But we need people who are committed to making the choice to lay down their lives for others to place their lives in a position where it does the greatest good to influence our world. Hear this short story from one of my meditations that I read this morning. These days, we hear a lot about freedom, but we rarely exercise our most precious freedom. You won't find it in the Bill of Rights, and if you read it, the Declaration of Independence only hints at it. No document of any nation anywhere in the world clearly spells it out. That's because no nation can give it to you and no nation, no people can take it away from you. This freedom is equally available to all people regardless of race, religion, sex, economic status, or circumstance. It is available to the prisoner, the invalid, the poor, the victim of discrimination, the timid, even the person who lives under a repressive regime. What is it? It is this. Each of us has the freedom to choose how we will respond to the circumstances in which we find ourselves. Life is a giant smorgasbord of choices, yet here we stand with our small plates that can only hold so much. Freedom demands that we make choices. Each of us should choose how we will respond to the circumstances in our world and the circumstances that are impacting the lives of those in need among us. We need people who are committed to making the choice to lay down their lives for others, to place their lives in a position where it does the greatest good to build God's kingdom and influence our world. Let us pray. God, we thank you for a call to worship. Not just a call to sing, dance, pray, or preach. Not even a call just to read our word, but a call to serve your name. So help us, God, as we go from this worship experience to hear your spirit calling us to look for places where our lives can make a difference. Transform in us, God, that prideful spirit that seats us in a place of judgment Transform us, God, to be your people who humbly reach out to meet the need of those who cry in agony. God, we pray for your grace and mercy to continue to abide with us, to remind us, O oh Lord, of our needs so that we can be more compassionate when we serve others in meeting theirs. 
We pray these prayers for the glory and honor of your son, Jesus' name. Amen. Well, beloved, I want to thank you again for tuning in with us. Whether you are calling in on the conference line or tuning in to one of our virtual options, we don't take it lightly that you are here. We are grateful that you are choosing to be a part of this worshiping community. We are a church that is transforming lives through our mission, ministry, and worship as a prophetic witness for Jesus Christ. We are here and we are available to Jesus Christ and we pray that you would be a part, continually a part, of the great work that God is doing with and through us. God bless you and I look forward to connecting with you soon.